There is no time for questions. When you were young, you used to have bad dreams. You cried about them all the time. The truth is, those weren't your dreams. They were mine. For as long as I can remember, I've dreamt of the beach. Not just while sleeping, in my waking hours, too. In my dreams, I watched the world end so many times. Countless past extinctions that decimated life on this planet. Again and again and again. At first, I didn't understand what I was seeing or why. And that wasn't the worst of it. There were other, more terrible dreams. Dreams of death and destruction. Of a massive extinction to come. Like this one. And I would always be the one to end it all. To bring about the last stranding. As I have today. first operation. I was only 20. I opened my eyes and found myself on the beach. But the moment I came round, I was back in the hospital bed. I was split across two worlds. Bridget, my hall in that one. Amelie, my car in this. Somehow, the two of us managed to coexist. Soon, our ages began to diverge. Only Bridget's body got older, while the beach kept Amelie's the same. So I came up with a story. I told people that Amelie was my daughter. A daughter with a debilitating condition and an absent father. Look. Amelie. Am... Um, is French for soul. A soul that's a lie. There was no Amelie. 
Only me and the beach. I thought it was a curse in the beginning. But later, I started thinking, maybe I can use this. I tried to find out more about the beach. Because understanding the beach had to be the key to interpreting my visions of the future. the beach was connected to the world of the dead, which meant that somewhere out beyond it were the memories of time itself, including those of every organism that had ever lived. 4.6 billion years of biological history, a history that might even stretch back to the creation of the universe. The chiral network and everything that followed was born from my pursuit of that knowledge. By passing data through the beach, we were unbound by the restrictions of time. Simulations that would have taken years or more were simple and effortless. Everything that the Earth had lost and forgotten could be reconstructed and reclaimed. But shortly after we began our research, America saw its first void out. I thought I was running out of time, that my nightmares were becoming a reality. So I raced to complete the chiral network as quickly as possible. The past held all the answers. If only I could find a way to piece them together. A network that bridged our world and the beach. That might do it, I believed. So, I started researching bridge babies. Children bound to the world of the dead. What causes an extinction entity to come into being? What was the reason for the previous five mass extinctions? The answers to those questions would tell me how to stop the Sixth. I founded Bridges, more determined than ever to build a chiral network that would cover all of America. But the longer I fought my war against the inevitable, the weaker I became. My ha uh, had cancer. The beach's punishment, maybe, for not playing along like a good little E.E. -E. And then, just like that, my ha was gone. I couldn't finish what I'd started. So, I asked you to do it for me. And you did. You helped us complete the network. Helped us to reclaim everything the universe experienced from its inception to this moment. Every mystery was ours to solve. Like this one. Once, 
There was an explosion. A big bang that gave birth to time and space. Thing is, it was more like a big fluke. All that matter and antimatter should have cancelled itself out, leaving nothing. But somehow, somehow a tiny speck of matter survived. Just enough. Enough to make this world and everything in it. A world that shouldn't be, a world out of balance. Order inevitably gives way to chaos. Everything that lives must inevitably die. It's like the universe is trying to return us to the nothing we came from. Maybe the Big Five were its best attempts to finish us off. Somehow, life always managed to survive just enough. Enough to thumb its nose at the will of the cosmos. You know, I'm starting to think that extinction might be the key to overcoming total annihilation. It forces life to fight to survive, to endure, to exist. That's why the Big Five ultimately rekindled life instead of extinguishing it. From the ashes of the dead, rise the living. Stronger and wiser. Inheritors of the legacy of existence itself. They defy the universe and refuse to surrender. They say, we're just getting started. Extinction is an opportunity. the trigger twice that day. I knew at once I'd made a mistake. I found your beach and looked everywhere for you. Sam. There you are. I wanted... I 
wanted to set you free from death once and for all. It's okay. I know the way. But in doing so, I upset the fundamental balance between life and death. Wanted to save you. I am an extinction entity. It's my fate to lead our species to extinction. But that moment, you became part of that fate. You became a repatriate, and dooms started spreading my nightmares to others throughout the world. It was me that got you and everyone with dooms into this. Not long after, the Death Stranding occurred. The dead clung to our world, and BTs used my beach to cross over and devour them, triggering more void outs. A catalyst that would set the world on a path to extinction. It was my duty to serve as a sacrifice, to wait and watch it unfold from this beach. That, or hasten the last stranding and end this slow death. Given these, my only options, I chose to end it quickly. But to trigger the last stranding, I needed you, a part of me. Here too. I would be able to witness extinction consummated with you by my side. But now that you're here, there's another choice. You can cut me off. An EE doesn't have that option for itself. But in my nightmares, I saw another future. One that you chose. One where extinction is hope against total annihilation. Ogan won't help you here. But it still has a role to play. Listen, Sam. I was the one that brought you and Cliff together again. There was something I wanted you to know. You were never abandoned. And you're not alone. Don't you see, Sam? You have to live.
You're still connected. For too long have we lived as strangers to one another, divided by walls built to keep us safe. But now with the completion of the Cairo network, we may at last move forward as a people united. Today we come together to celebrate the birth of a new nation, a new nation for a new world, the United Cities of America. 
I once took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And though that proud republic may be no more, we remain. And so, as your president, I hereby swear to support and defend you, the people. Let there be no more walls between us, nor masks to hide who we are. Let there be a new America. An America where we can face one another. Where we can speak our minds and open our hearts. Now, the old ways die hard. But I believe, my fellow Americans, that we have the strength and the courage to rise above our past and embrace our future. The Death Stranding is a part of that past. An enduring shadow, a constant reminder of what could have been. That we stand here today is testament, not to the greatness of any one individual, but to our capacity to come together, to the bonds between us, to our collective greatness. All things must come to an end, ourselves included. But as long as we savor each moment, find joy in the promise of tomorrow, embrace hope and reject despair, we will endure. President Bridget Strand and her daughter, Samantha America Strand, sacrificed everything in their pursuit of hope that we the people might be whole again. That they are not here today to see the fruits of their labor fills us all with a profound sadness. But we find comfort in the knowledge that their memories will live on in the Cairo network and in our hearts. We will always remain connected. There is another hero in this story. One whose achievements seem destined to go unrecognized. America still needs that hero. That person without whom we would not be here. Now, the name is unimportant. But you know who I mean. And for that unsung hero, I have a message. It was you who brought us together. You who made us whole again. And while you and I will eventually pass on, we will be... Going somewhere, Sam? Tired of being the unsung hero? No, I'm done is all. She's gone. Come on, wait. There's something I need to tell you. Huh. This doesn't bother you anymore? <laughs> well, that's great! Now, wouldn't you like to know how we brought you back from the beach? We were going to use the doll, but didn't have one handy, which is when I remembered something else. Not what I think it is. Yes. What could be more connected to Amelie's beach than President Strand's umbilical cord? Hmm. Hartman thought that's why she left it with me in the first place. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Yeah, she'd already cut her beach loose. It was just gone. We didn't know if that meant she dragged you into the great beyond or sent you to some other beach. We were really racking our brains. Hartman and Mama split up and started searching every beach you might feasibly have washed up on. We looked for a month with absolutely nothing to show for it. A month on the outside. How long on the inside? Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to know. But don't worry. We found no signs of accelerated aging. In the end, 
this is what led us to you. Just when we were about to give up, Die Hardman reminded us about the revolver. So we tried to follow it, and it led us to a far corner of your own beach. And bingo, there you were. Mama made visual contact first. She was able to see you from her vantage point on the other side. She informed Lochna via their connection, and Hartman confirmed your location during his subsequent NDE. The plan was for Fragile to, in essence, slingshot Lou and me to your position so we could rescue you. But it's not so easy to send multiple individuals to another person's beach for an extended period of time. And that's where the umbilical cord came in. We wove these from President Strand's DNA. They serve as a single knot that binds us all. The President must have known all of this would happen. Ironic, isn't it? The gun that set this whole mess in motion ends up being the key to saving you. Hmm. Amelie, she said it had another purpose. Not a weapon, but a lifeline. A stick that became a rope. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of putting it. You have no idea how long I've been waiting to give you a hug. Got something else to tell you. Top secret. It's about Cliff. Bibi's mother's name was Lisa Bridges. Cliff's common-law wife. Lisa Bridges? Uh, uh, now, Cliff was killed by a man identified in the records only as John. Former U.S. Special Forces. Quite good at it, by all accounts. Later appointed as an aide to the president, who used him for most of her wet work. The records go on to state that he vanished after Cliff's death. A warrant was put out, but he was later found dead. Turns out some people die harder than others, though. Dear John donned a mask and reappeared with a new identity. But you can't fool the chiral network. We restored the old records, and Mama hid them deep in the archives. You're the only one besides us with access privileges. Take a look if you're so inclined. But don't say I didn't warn you. The President's got some dirty, dirty laundry. I don't trust him, but I'll work with him if that's what it takes. We'll talk later. Sam. I don't expect you to forgive me. But would you hear me out? I killed Captain Clifford Unger. I would tell you I did it for America. For love of country. But I didn't. I did it for her. Because I loved her with all my heart. She was everything to me. Everything. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses. I just want you to know that not a day's gone by when I haven't thought about it. Time didn't help. Or the mask. Please, let me finish. He, the captain, saved my life. You know why they call me Die Hartman. Because he wouldn't let me die. He brought my sorry ass back home, every time. And I... loved him. 
as much as I loved her. And when he stared me down, that ghost, I knew he was here to kill me, to make it right. And why shouldn't he? Why didn't he? He couldn't save his, his kid, his baby. And that's what brought him back. I guess when he, he saw I was trying to do my part for America. He remembered who he was, and he forgave me. God! But I don't deserve it, God damn it! There is no atoning for what I've done. Dad, God! <laughs> but maybe... Maybe this is the next best thing. Maybe he brought me back from the beach for a reason. One last time. He wanted me to do this. To keep on being Die Hardman. No. He didn't. Nobody wants a president who acts like they're immortal. And if you're not scared of death, how can you value life? And life is pretty fucking fragile right now. And yeah, the old ways die hard. But that's what's gonna have to happen if we're gonna come together and build a better America. That gun won't help you here. That's her words, not mine. Thank you, Sam.